Hi, I'm Matt Pangrak, and today we are in Skyatook, Oklahoma, on the shores of beautiful Lake Skyatook. Northeast Oklahoma, April, and the water's in the 50s. And there's also something really cool in the water in this lake behind me, smallmouth bass in Northeast Oklahoma, and we're gonna catch a few. Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. Oh, oh, God. oh my gosh. Oh, oh. Check that out. It's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the southeast region every week. Cobia! Big one. And a monster! Look Beautiful. at that! That's a Tawakini giant. This is Let's Fish. Welcome to Skyatook Lake, a 10,500 acre fishery located in northeast Oklahoma. And today we'll be targeting smallmouth bass. We'll also have fishing reports from your local region, from our inside reporters. I'm gonna get this boat in the water and get things ready to go. So for now, let's kick it back to the studio for your weekend planning. Thanks so much for joining us. These Salooner tables are predicting good game fish activity throughout both days this weekend. Peak game fish activity begins at 1.36 Saturday and 2.24 Sunday afternoon. Night activity will begin around 1.15 on Saturday and 2.01 early Sunday morning. Depending on your location, the sun will rise around 6.51 and set around 8.04, and evenings will feature a moon that's 7% visible. Stick with us, we've got fishing reports from across the area on the way, plus Bassmaster Elite Angler John Sukup stops by to answer your Ask a Pro question. We are in Northeast Oklahoma on a pretty windy but beautiful spring day. It's early April and we are on Skyatook Lake. You know, Skyatook Lake is one of the most famous fisheries in the state of Oklahoma. You have clear water and abundance of forage and a lot of different species. You have smallmouth, largemouth, sawgye, walleye, hybrids, and white bass. Today, we're gonna do one of my favorite things in the spring, and that is target aggressive smallmouth using swim baits, jerk baits, and small minnow imitators. It's gonna be fun. Skytook is not really known as a destination bass fishery and it, it can be a tough fishery. It's, it's a diverse fishery, you can do a number of different things at it and uh, especially when those hybrids and those whites get going a little later in the year in the summertime or even this time of the year if they get the bait pushed up it can be really fun plus some table fare when you throw the walleye in. Beautiful lake, uh, you have a lot of pontoon boats, a lot of family friendly activities that go on on the lake so just a really cool place and a great place to spend a weekend. Now, probably not gonna catch a world record out here, but close to Tulsa, close to a lot of things to do in the mountains, really cool lake. Eat it. There's one. Smallmouth. We're out here on Sky Took Lakes, and that's one of the cool things about this fishery here in Oklahoma, is that there's a bunch of different species, and that right there is a nice little smallmouth bass just suspended on the end of a long tapering point right here, about 55 degree water. And the key to, to catch these is you have to find groups of them. If you can find groups of two or three using an umbrella rig here, uh, you typically can get the competition of these fish to compete for it and like there were two or three in that and I saw one shot up and he ate it but that's probably a nice little two two and a quarter pound fish nice little fish to get the day started all right this is a pretty uh, typical rig for Oklahoma in the spring when you're fishing these clear water uh, rocky man-made reservoirs you're imitating a a ball of bait a school of bait one of the things that I like to do is I like to put straight tailed baits, uh, especially when I'm just searching, I like to put straight tailed baits on the outside this, and then put a paddle tail in the middle. A lot of the times a fish will target that different eight ounce jig heads on it, allows that bait to get down. But instead of having a lot of action, I like to go straight tails on the outside, little kicker swimmer in the middle. That seems to get a lot more bites. It focuses those fish to get to the middle of that bait and, and, and eat that one that's a little bit different. Hey folks, it's time for your Carolina's Report. This week brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina, the leader in water sports on the Grand Strand. Want to get you out on the water. Want to make sure you have fun. Want to make sure you live like a local. 
We can do it all right here. Our fish finder fleet, silver tuna sidekick, new inlet princess. It's all right here if you'll visit crazysystemmarina.com. But I'll tell you, I want to talk this week about the Grand Strand Fishing Rodeo, and I'm sitting here with my partner, Russ. This is my man. He signed up for the Grand Strand Fishing Rodeo. You, women, all you professional anglers, novice, Rookies, we don't care. We've set the Grand Strand Fishing Rodeo up for everybody. We've got monthly contests between six saltwater species, three freshwater species. You can catch them anywhere. You've got to get signed up. You've got to go to TrilogyOutdoorsMedia.com to find out more information. Click on that Grand Strand Fishing Rodeo and get signed up. You want to come down now because this month, Spanish mackerel, bluefish, and flounder are inshore species, and they are going off. Whether you're fishing inshore and nearshore, the Spanish mackerel are the jetties, they're at the reefs, but the flounder are thick. They're in the inlets. Cherry Grove, our good friends up on the north end of the Grand Strand, they're having a lot of success right now. Live mullet, live mud minnows, if you're able to get those mullet, get out there. Bigger mullet, bigger fish, it's just how it works. But also, don't forget about the good old artificials that you can get out there and catch them with too. And I tell you, the voodoo shrimp, don't overlook it for flounder, they're incredible. Get out and enjoy some of the best fishing that we have in the Carolinas over the next month. I promise you, you won't regret it. Book a trip with Crazy Sister and I'll tell you, Russ, what? This is your Carolinas Report. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. There's one. There's another nice smallmouth. You see what I was talking about earlier? I have all four of the baits on the outside that don't have any action to it. And that middle bait, and there's a nice Sky Took Lake smallmouth, that middle bait with the action is the one that he targeted right there on the umbrella rig. And there's another nice smallmouth, about 53 degree water, and these fish are just keying on. It's a little windier than it was supposed to be today. We probably have about 15 to 20 mile an hour winds, and I'm just taking uh, rock banks that have a channel swing very close by, and these smallmouth are up here just feeding on small little schools of threadfin shad. Anytime the water's in the, the 40s or 50s in Oklahoma, an umbrella rig, uh, an Alabama rig is a great selection because a lot of the fish this time of the year are keying on, on probably the most predominant forage base in Oklahoma, and that's going to be the threadfin shad. Uh, these threadfin shad get, get grouped up on drops, on, on gravel flats, on, on rock transitions, and the bass just really target them. Uh, I think one of the reasons why the umbrella rig is so effective is because it it obviously represents a school of shad with the, the four blades and then the five baits. And when the water is cold, that fish wants to uh, exert as, as little energy as possible with the highest chance of reward. So when you're, you're targeting one swim bait, you know, if you miss it, that's a lot of energy, but you have a much higher percentage chance of, of capturing that meal, of getting that thread fin shad. Uh, if there's a group of six to 10 of them, and that's what the umbrella rig represents and, and why it's so effective in Oklahoma during the cold weather months. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury, Go Boldly, Lorenz, the ultimate fishing system, Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan or book your fishing charter at orangebeach.com. Motor Guides Tour Pro with GPS Anchor, powered by passion. Glacier Outdoor, outdoors since 1982. There's one. That one just absolutely slack lined me. That's a good fish right there. That one just absolutely slack lined me. That's a good fish right there. Another nice little smallmouth. You 
Now I came back down the dam. I started out this morning. I wasn't really sure what to expect. <clears throat> and we came out here looking to figure out where we could find these smallmouth in a transition after a cold front. We're gonna let this fish go. And then I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about how to relocate fish when a cold front comes through in the spring. All right, we've gotten on a solid pattern targeting smallmouth bass with an umbrella rig here, Skyatook Lake. Water's about 53 degrees here in April but it wasn't exactly how I planned on coming out and catching them. The water had been more close to 60 degrees. The fish had been really pushed up prior to this and then a cold front came through. So fishing the conditions is key any time of the year, specifically also in spring when those fish are moving in transition periods. So actually started on the dam this morning and didn't have any bites, but revisited it. We had a switch in the wind condition, a little bit of ripple on the water and those fish got more active. So all of our bites today have been on main lake where wind hits rock, a transition from about six down to 12 foot of water. So we'll see if we can put that together for the rest of the day and keep these smallmouth coming in the boat. Hey y'all, welcome to my favorite part of the show, the Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia Coastal Fishing Report. This segment's brought to you by me, Captain Patrick Garmison with Ugly Fishing. Check out my website, you can book online. You can also have some money saving opportunities there on the homepage as well. Uh, uglyfishing.com. Along the Alabama area, a lot of our uh, fishing trips recently have uh, been targeting bull reds out on the Gulf beaches. Uh, to, looking for some of these schools to be feeding on the surface, uh, some bird activity giving that away, and then if not, we're finding these fish on our side scan using side vision uh, on our Ray Marine fish finder. Uh, Georgia area, Mike Mosley, top of the line charter, said that the redfish are really dominating the action right now. As well as he said that the speckled trout bite and the black drum bite around the rivers and the, and the sounds have been pretty good. He said that the live shrimp or mud minnows on the bottom are also producing a few flounder. Mississippi area, uh, the guys over there are still catching a few sheep's head. Uh, they're starting to target those bull reds like we are here in Alabama. They're catching those out around the sandbars and the, and the uh, barrier islands. Hey y'all, thanks for stopping in, checking out this week's report. Y'all keep what you need, leave the rest, and God bless guys. There's one. On the jerk bait. Nice little smallmouth. I was seeing these fish in relating to the bottom, but they were in about six to eight foot and I figured that I could get a jerk bait down there to it and there he is too. Got him right in the corner of the mouth right there. There's a nice sky took lake smallmouth right there. Right in the corner of the mouth. Primarily been using the umbrella rig today, but just switched it up through a suspending jerk bait and targeted those fish. I'd been watching them on the forward facing sonar, kind of following the bait in, but not committing. So that jerk bait, pause, suspend just above the bottom on that drop, that six to eight foot drop where the rock kind of transitions down. Fish came up and popped it right there. Nice little, little fat smallmouth, pre-spawn smallmouth. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Visit Mississippi. Wanderers welcome. Powerful. Total boat control. Balls out. Made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. Rely on. Challenge your limits. Golly, it's digging. Come on, baby. Be a big one. There's a fish right there on the pause. Walleye, one of the most diverse fisheries. They talked about everything that lived in this lake. This is a nice walleye here, folks. This is probably about a four pound walleye. I'll move the rods over here. You know, we started out this morning talking about all the different types of fish that are in the lake. 
and we've caught uh, spotted bass, we've caught smallmouth, and this right here is a nice walleye on the jerk bait. One of the cool things about spring, you get up, you never know, you never know what you're gonna catch. I'm gonna be very careful here with this guy. And that right there is a really nice guy it took Lake Walleye. These guys have teeth. A lot of people think of them as a northern fish. And they are, but that right there, probably about a 20, 22 inch walleye. I'm a tournament bass angler. I fish the Bassmaster Open EQs, but anytime you get in the springtime and you're fun fishing, I think, uh, I think being on a fishery that has a lot of different species, a diverse fishery is such a cool thing. And you take full advantage of that. You know, we came out here to catch smallmouth bass today, but add in the spotted bass uh, and a bonus walleye like that. And you know, fish like that kind of can make the trip a, a bonus fish that you're not planning on catching, but a really cool species. Uh, and Skyatook is a lake that has it. Like it says, it has all three of the, the species of bass, a number of different, those uh, hybrid, uh, the white bass and then the walleye on top of it so uh, just one of many lakes in Oklahoma that you can catch a bunch of different types of fish at but specifically in April this time of the year throwing baits that, that attract numerous species you, you can't go go wrong with that that's such a fun fun thing to do is to catch big bonus fish hey guys this is your Alabama Tennessee and Mississippi fishing report so let's go ahead let's get started now, right now in Tennessee, we just came back from Watts Bar, and let's say Watts Bar fished really good. Um, the fish were up shallow, they were on the laydowns, the water was clear, the water was getting really warm, and all you guys had to do is just go find a bunch of laydowns that were on channel swing banks or on banks leading into spawning pockets. Um, caught them really well flipping a Strike King Rage Bug. Um, also caught them really well on the top water. Um, and also throwing a striking spinner bait. Let's go ahead, let's go over to Alabama. Right now on Smith Lake, the spotted bass and the largemouth, it's getting really good. The spotted bass, they're getting shallow, they're starting to spawn. Um, the largemouth, they're starting to go to the spawning pockets. You can use your forward-facing sonar, throw swim baits, um, jigs, and beat in the bank, and you guys will catch some big spotted bass doing that. Now in Mississippi, Bay Springs is fishing really good still. Um, the bass, there's still some spawning, but there's a lot going post-spawn. But the ones that are spawning, you can see them, they're on the beds or on the cover, um, flipping a small white speed crawl or anything white where you can really see your bait. I feel like that's been key of watching those fish bite and watching them not. Also on Bay Springs, throwing a jerk bait around the cover has been really good. There's a lot of shad up on the banks. Um, the bass are starting to chase them a little bit spinner bait, chatter bait, and you guys do that and you'll get a lot of bites doing that. I hope you guys have been enjoying this nice weather. And get out there, get on the lake, catch some fish. God bless. Thailands. There's a fish right there. It feels like a pretty good one. Golly, it's digging. Come on, baby. Be a big one. I don't know what we have here. Here it comes. Oh, it's a largemouth. We got us a nice largemouth, probably about a three pound largey. And just play it out. Come here, fella. There we go, look at that. Add to the species total today. Typically when you think of Northeast Oklahoma, you think of that right there. You think of the Ozark region, pre-spawn fish, nice fat bellies on them. Northern strain largemouth like that. But we've just caught all sorts of fish today. You know, we've had a big walleye, we've had four or five nice smallmouth, and that's a nice three pound largemouth to hit the suspending jerk bait. 
What a cool, diverse fishery Sky Took Lake is. On top of it, gorgeous. You have the mountains surrounding the area. You have the clear water. Really cool part of the country to visit. Tulsa, not that far off. Really overlooked fishery in this part of the country. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for new fishing videos every day. And download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Lose, Feel the Difference, Mamba Boats, Ride with Pride, Strike King, Taiwan On, Fishing Specialties, makers of the premier mount assembly for live sonar. Welcome back everybody. Let's get right on over to your Ask the Pro question for this week. This week, Brant would like to know, what advice would you give to a high school tournament angler? For the answer, we asked Bassmaster Elite Angler, John Suka. All right, we were always asked by high schoolers, you know, what advice would we give you if you want to become a professional angler? And you're going to hear this time and time and time and time again. So I'm going to give you two answers. One is time on the water. And I don't mean just in a boat. I mean in a belly boat, on the banks, time on the water. I didn't have my first boat until I was 29 years old. So you cannot make excuses for not having the equipment. You need to get on the water, get in the backs of the creeks, get in the pond, get time on the water. The second one, is learn how to be a professional at everything in life. From your schoolwork to your work ethic to business, whatever you do, do it 110% and do not stop, do not sleep, do not rest. Work ethic, work ethic, worth it. Thank you so much, John. If you would like some help from one of the pros just like that, all you have to do is go to letsfishtv.com, follow that Ask the Pro link and submit your question. Here's today's Right Stuff, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. You know, we started the day off throwing an umbrella rig on a 7.6 extra heavy rod with 30 pound Sunline Asagai braid on it. But really the game changer came when the wind switched directions and I could see those fish kind of following the umbrella rig in and I switched to a jerk bait. Now in the spring, your jerk bait setup is very important. This is a seven foot medium heavy action cranking rod, but I like to throw my jerk baits with it. It has a very forgiving tip, but it has enough backbone to where when you bump into a fish, it gives, and then at the boat, they do not pull the hooks out. Paired that with a Luz Custom Pro Light Reel, and the line is also really important. I'm throwing 10 pound test Sunline Crank FC line. This has a special coating on it that allows for longer casts, and the thinner diameter gets that deep diving jerk bait down to that six to eight foot range after just a couple of bumps and gets it right in the strike zone. So that was the key on the jerk bait and on the umbrella rig today. Well, we've had a fun afternoon out here on Skyatook Lake in Oklahoma, just pulling the boat out of the water at the ramp. Hopefully you guys have learned how to find and catch smallmouth bass and a couple other species here on Skyatook. Hey, stay tuned for another exciting episode of Let's Fish TV next week. Thanks for tuning in.